So I'm Dan. I'm Nick. And we are together. The we form Unpanders. The Unpanders. Yes. We got it. That's pretty good. Perfect. Asynchronous C synchronous. Cadence. Cadence is everything, folks. Yeah. And I'm K and he's Dince. Did you ever um have like music class and they make you sing in a round? So they they have one half of the class sing Michael Road is Boat Ashore and then it's like Michael Road is Boat Ashore. It's like I don't know. I know what you're talking about where they it's a it's a call and answer type thing. Yeah. But I feel like you did that every time in music and it was just embarrassing. Ooh, Danny boy. That's that's interesting that that's your name because the only time we ever had a, a singing class of any kind in my entire life was in like sixth grade. And I think it was like a rainy day and the teacher had no clue what to do. And she made us sing Danny boy. Danny oh, boy, Danny, Danny boy, Shenny Cookin, can he sing Danny boy? And I, I was like, <laughs> we were all like 12. Like this is like the 00s or I guess it was still the 90s when I was in sixth grade, but. It just seemed very, like, this is 40 years old, and no one knows the song, no one knows what we're doing, we never <laughs> sing. What's going on here, lady? Was, was, and it stuck with me. It's she weird. was an old lady. Was one she of your da- Dan's friends, one of your friends named Dan, were they doing a little spin pirouette he in the was, middle of the room? He was in my class for sixth grade, so otherwise, yeah. uh, who knows what he was doing in the other classroom. Probably drawing pictures of Penises. cute guys. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh, oh, we went too far. Oh shit! <laughs> Woo! We went there. Okay, we got there in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyone under twenty-one? Anyone under twenty-nine? Anyone under thirty-six? What, what's the real number here? Um, odd numbers. Twenty-one <laughs> and under. Eighteen and under. Eighteen and under. Are advised not to listen to this podcast. Listen it's materials. SW. We're just cramming all the materials in there and. It's too tight a fit, folks. Yeah. You're not going to fit in there. It's, like, it's like, it. like making sausage. Sometimes you get the nasty bits in there and just, it tastes good, but. <laughs> Call me off with that one. <laughs> making sausage, folks. Um, so if you're on our team, click that follow button, click that subscribe button, but do not watch the video. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate your view. Yeah, and you can also, go to our website, www.unpanders.com. Is it the Unpanders? That's harder to remember. No, it's just Unpanders. Oh, that's easier to remember. Yeah. In fact, it's very simple. In fact, it's here. Yeah. Or here. I forget where you it's up it. here. Cool. It's all up there. Um, also, for the record, we would like to tell the kind folks at home that none of these opinions, statements, jokes, impersonations, or stories are actually real. Yeah. It's all opinion therein, not based on our employers, our friends, our relatives, anyone we've ever met. Yeah, and if you're listening in on the podcast, whenever I wink, it means it is my opinion. But not <laughs> on the YouTube channel. Oh, interesting. interesting twist, huh? Quite a twist. I don't even know what it means, but I imagine we're covered legally. <laughs> I'll make sure to wink with both eyes. <laughs> That's a blink and not a wink. Your Honor, uh, my client Dan of the Unpanders was chugging lemon juice when it got in his eye, and he repeatedly blinked for the rest of the episode. Oh, man. I don't even think you'd digest that much lemon juice if it was pure. You'd be cracking you would... lemons. It'd be, oh, it'd sear your anus. When life hands you lemons, sit on them. See what <laughs> yeah. happens. Hmm. Huh. Well, I actually have a new tongue twister. I was excited to try this one out for oh, you. Because really? I made it up. I didn't read it online. I didn't hear no one else say it. This is my tongue twister. Only The only reason I know it is because we have a, a titty club. Oh, oh nice. That's <laughs> It's a customer. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to name names, but they, uh, they order fryer oil. Please, and have, I, please be dirty. I hope this one. No, no, dirty. no, 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 no. Ah, that's the whole. That's the whole tongue twister. I apologize, but um, every time he says, "I want one fryer oil," I have to say it back to him. So I say, "Okay, one fryer oil," and by the time we both said it, it sounds like a whole different word. So I'm like, "How many times can you say that word in a row?" And I'd like you to try for the podcast, Dan. Give us fryer oil. We'll fryer, fryer oil. Fryer oil. Fryer. Fa fa fa. <laughs> See, <laughs> fr- if you do do it, oil. you sound like you're southern somehow. Fryer like you're oil, like. Fryer. Fryer roll, fry roll, fry roll. It's like you have marbles in your mouth. Exactly. Anyway, that's fryer oil. That's pretty good. Oops. Try it at home. Try that one. That's mine. Yeah. I made it up. I get all rights, all money, all legal fees. Just move myself in the camera here. I'd like to say uh, there are some clarifications from the last episode. You have a correction? Yeah. Because I have one as well. Go ahead. Okay, good. Because um, last time you asked me if I'd want to have a a threesome of my choice with my wife involved, and then a threesome of her choice 
I do recall. Yeah, you're right. With me involved. Um, I would like to say that not for one moment did I consider that. (laughs) That's like an ESPN (laughs) the next day. This is like a... a, I'd like to say that I made no comment and thought no scenario. I thought no further of it. I didn't even consider it. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't even consider it, honey. Hmm. Interesting. This is your press conference the next day. <clears throat> Adjusting his tie. No, I did not even consider a threesome. Pulling out like, anyway. random women's clothing. Mm-hmm. Just like dripping with uh, various oils and sediments. <laughs> That's a dirty rag. That's one dirty, <laughs> dirty rag. You're rolling around in the dirt. Well, I actually also had a correction in the last episode. Something we did wrong. Yeah. um, I discussed a little bit about fighter planes, and I said something about the F-16 fired a certain missile. A lot of people were probably going to jump on me. The F-16 could actually not fire AIM-120s, AMRAAMs, AIM-7 Sparrows. Um, That was the F-18. They didn't have the Block 15 ADF installed, so all my bad. Another quick clarification... The F-18 is the one that uses a probe to latch into the drogue for refuel systems. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, I was a little confused when you went over that last time. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I tripped you up, and I, I apologize so much to our intrepid viewers, listeners out there. Trolls. I just didn't want to offend Trolls, the <laughs> F-18, when I was talking about the F-16. So, clarification, I apologize. Ooh, move on, folks. Man. Let's move on. I almost lost, lost some sleep over that one. But I didn't. I had some sweet dreams. So it's uh, ooh, smirk or smile. I like this little segment. I like it's, it's a fun one. It's a good one. Mine's short, but it's pretty sweet. Oh really? Who would you like to go first? It's short. Would you like me to go first because it's short, or would you like you to go first because it's just oh, you got this great smirk or smile. I'm the Dan half of the podcast. I have two, so I'm gonna sandwich you. Um, smirk. <laughs> I almost hit a deer the other day mm. uh, while walking. He jumped out of the bushes. <laughs> oh, no, guard. You really, you should have led with the whole story and then said, I was walking. He jumped out of the bushes. I swerved left. I, I moved my one arm to the right. We almost hit. It's it's the beginning, though. They're, okay. they're going in the Go rut. Ahead. They're getting a little wild and freaky. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those bushes are right by is the bike it, Is it that time of year? Is it rutting time? I think it is. Because this one yeah. deer, Yo, he had that out, look in his eyes. To them deer getting it. If you're listening and you're a deer, mm-hmm. hit that like button. Hit subscribe. I'm all about my deer getting some. Mm-hmm. I, I hear mm-hmm. that the deer like it when you get on all fours. So if you really want to be friends with the deer, just saunter up next to them on all fours. If you're the submissive type, yeah. I grab a deer by his antlers. I give it to him. That's when I tape the fake tail to my butt and wiggle oh. in the air. Oh. <laughs> Is that a doe? No, it's a Dan. He's going on all fours. And he bought that butt plug for a reason, folks. <laughs> Ooh. Huh. Ooh. So that was that was legitimate. I almost actually got hit by one. I was surprised because I only heard the bushes rustle, and then it was in front of me. And then I was like, "What the? They they do this?" And they do this. <laughs> what did he actually do? Like just sprint by you and keep he, going, or he was moving you? like did twenty he... miles an hour. He like leapt out of that bush towards me. Yeah, I don't want no business with that. I'm going to be that guy that punches the deer and says, what are you doing, man? (laughs) Get back! (laughs) Have some respect! Uh, Deer! So Hmm. I think that was my my number one. Is that smart? I think that, a little bit of both, because I was like, what the hell? What the hell, man? Life. Who made these animals? (laughs) God. Holy mackerel. (laughs) Mine's a little more decadent. Oh. So we're unloading the truck out there. Uh, I'll say the name of the street, folks. Chelt Nav. Shout out Chelt Nav. Mm. I know you're listening, folks. And an ambulance is coming. It, we're, it's a busy street. It's a main thoroughfare. And we all got to, everybody slows down. I want to see what the ambulance is doing. You know what I mean? I check this out. He's doing like 60. He's screaming. Lights are going. And the light by our work is red so I, i'm like is he gonna do it is he gonna do a slow slow down what's he gonna go just plow through mm-hmm. sometimes you hold your you hold like this and you're like oh, don't crash and then you're like please crash don't crash center of attention like, yeah right you just want to you want to see something so he slows down he slows down a lot he slows down a lot and he turns off his lights 
and he goes through the intersection at like two mile an hour, and he's cruising, and he cruises for like right up past us, and I hear him yelling, right? And now he's past us, and I'm like, who's he yelling at? It's it's an ambulance. My dad's over here, and he's looking, and I'm looking. And then his lights snap back on, and he goes off at like 60 mile an hour, and I was like, well, and my dad he gives me the elbow, and there's this middle-aged woman with this big old butt, right, and she's <laughs> down the street, and he's like, he was hollering at her, and I was like, what? And I was like, <laughs> like someone's in the back, like going, <gasps> and then the guy's like, Hoo. hey, girl, yo, honey, what's up? You want to check out a corpse? Thing is thick. <laughs> And I just thought that was awesome. I'm going to bring that booty back to life. <laughs> EKG. <laughs> paddles a life on you, honey. Anyway, I thought that was awesome. And I mean, who's going to tell on the guy? Me? I mean, I just did. But I mean, that's like... <laughs> yeah, we were watching the Unpanders, Mark. Uh, that was your route that day. He died. He was 10 seconds too late. You can... I don't know what came over me. Yeah. Like, old booty in a smile. He uh, he delivered that story so well that you could clearly picture <laughs> that you were in that story, Mark. Yeah, he, he read off your license plate, Mark. I don't know what you said. <sighs> Interesting. That was my smirk smile of the past few days. So this is going to be a roundabout smirk smile, because I have this book called All the Pretty Horses on my desk, and it's actually what my mic sits on. You probably heard the little tap. I did. In the movie version oh, of the of the, the book, book. yeah, okay. of the interesting. Book. This it's might tie in later. Matt Damon and Penelope Cruz, who, mm, yep, and she, uh, she looks She's a little like Mission Impossible too, right? Is she Pen- Penelope Cruz? He's in uh, uh, Vanilla Sky. Yeah, 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 that's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the second Tom Cruise movie she's in. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. There must be something there. Spark. Scientology. She's married to uh, Javier Bardem. Bardem, by the way. Who's that? He was in the James Bond movie. <laughs> Which one? He's also in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the new one. You've never seen any of these. I'll just skip that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> skip forward uh, for the podcast. Everyone at home knows exactly what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Let's go. So this is the jump in logic. Um, I had a dream that I was, I started in the back of a car. It's like one of those old style gangster cars. And... I was Tommy in Gun? Columbia. So okay. I was being held hostage by drug runners. Mm-hmm. And in the front seat, there was a Penelope Cruz lookalike who kind of looked like Camilla Cabello, if you know who that is. No, but go on. This is interesting. So she gave me the kiss of death because she jumped on top of me and it was getting a little physical. But whenever I have dreams, they get kind of sexy. They always get kind of strange and weird, and nothing ever happens. And I'm always disappointed. That tells me something about you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's life. And um, hmm. so she gave me the kiss of death. It, it got kind of interesting. And then she jumped she off. Marked, right? Yeah. And as soon You're as dead. as soon as soon like it, she, she marked me, I decided, like, I needed to get the hell out of there. So I oh. bolted, and it was in the middle of the jungle. And I'm literally Fuck. like going through the, going through the, the bushes, going through the trees, and I, I find this clearing, and these guys are after me with machine guns. They're chasing close behind me, and I think this is my spirit animal. This is what gave me the smile. Is a cheetah, came out of the woods, right at me. He was sprinting directly towards me, and the mm-hmm. moment he saw the drug runners, he diverted his his attack line and went right after them, and I survived because of the cheetah. Hmm. Hmm. See, so you were kissing another woman, and a cheetah? You're a cheetah or something? You're a cheater? My cheetah chi. The right, chi of the cheetah. You're a cheater. A chakras, yeah. yeah. They aligned. The old Straight cheater. line to my enemies. Hmm. Interesting. That was just the, one of the best ways to wake up. I never know how to re- respond to people's dreams. And do you want to hear the coolest reason why? <sighs> sure. Okay. Um, I roomated with a guy for four straight years at college. His name was Tom. Oh, you you roomated him? Yeah, yeah I roommated with him yeah, <laughs> in the room. I mated with him. Okay. <laughs> he was a fairly oh uh, yeah average individual. I love him. 
but the reason I say average is for this reason. Normal guy, whatever. Um, one day uh, he was arguing with me, and he's at his computer, and we would just look at college humor back to back, not even like uh-huh. talk to each other for like hours at a time. This was back in the heyday. Yeah, the that was back when college humor was big, and they had kind of oh, yeah, videos dude. on there too. No, it was before videos. It was just pictures mostly. Huh. There was like Facebook wasn't even around. I anyway, we were just like look at polit- I'm telling you. <laughs> I remember looking at videos <laughs> of college humor. Um, they did get videos, but yeah. this is pre-video. This is like literally it would be like someone's cool Halloween costume, like someone writing the word slut over like uh, a dog or something and everyone would laugh and like I don't know, just goofy things. I remember in high school kids watching porn on college humor in the lab, the computer lab. Huh. I don't learn porn, but... You couldn't do I mean, any work in the computer lab because the kid would be like, hey, hey, <laughs> did you see this one? And then you'd turn around and be like full frontal and you'd be like, oh. Yes, no. I do see it now. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I do I do see it. You're absolutely correct. It's hard to avoid eye contact with it. Well, Tom, one day he's like, isn't it Wednesday or Thursday? And I was like, no, blah, blah, blah. It's I always do chem lab this day. Yeah. Uh, I have a paper due here, blah, blah, blah. It's definitely Thursday. And we argued. He looked it up a line. He's like, ah, you get these wrong a lot. So I asked him. I said, why? Are you just, are you stupid? Answer me, Tom. Are you stupid or something? And he was like, he was like, no, I just dream of a day. And I'm like, what do you mean? Day what he I explained? No, no, no. He, when he dreams, he dreams that he wakes up. And he has to brush his teeth, and he's tired, and he has to, like, check his phone, and he has to check his watch, and he has to figure out what to wear, and then he has to, like, figure out how he's going to get to class and what time he should really leave, and if he should have breakfast, and then he slowly walks to class, and then he has to sit through, like, a 50-minute lecture, and usually he doodles, and usually does this, and I was like, wait, Tom, are you describing a dream? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> That's the saddest dream. And, and I was like, what? And he's like, it's just, like, a regular Tuesday. And I'm like, so... You, like, you don't fly or shoot people with machine guns or Uzis or anything? It's like, no, it's, like, really boring. <laughs> I was like, that's the worst dream ever. So then he would wake up thinking it's the next day, but really he has to relive Tuesday again. God, that's terrible. How awful is that? I would never want to that's... relive a work day. <laughs> Why would you dream of a work day or, like, a regular Tuesday? It was the oddest thing ever, but it... it... <sighs> Cheat is coming out of the woods Way cool. Way better. Hey, I give that. Oh, definitely. I do know this. Imagine. I do know this one woman who has narcolepsy, but it's uh-huh. like a very uh, soft version of narcolepsy. And <laughs> soft. it's like barely. It's barely a nap. Yeah, people. It's a people snooze. People confuse it with uh, cataplexy, which is like absolutely losing your like in a moment. You you're like Whoa. paralyzed. Whoa. Look at you. Check that yeah, out. Ah, so with narcolepsy, she, you get like, she taught just me tired, that. Tired, tired. You fall asleep? Yeah, narcolepsy is like an overall tiredness, so you take stimulants to stay awake. And then when you do fall asleep and dream, your like REM cycles messed up, so you kind of go in and out of the dream, and it feels more real. That makes sense to me. So you like taking Ambien and staying awake and beating off. Did you say taking Ambien? (laughs) (laughs) I did. Think you did. It's a common theme. I've never done it. I, I have no idea. I'm just. I don't know what that does. I've taken Ambien before, but I... Did you go to bed after it? People do talk about, like, really vivid dreams from Ambien. And they do random shit. Hallucinations if you don't let yourself go to sleep. This is what I've heard. heard. Never done it. People say they can carry on, like, full conversations. I I read about this before I took it, and I was like, this sounds pretty cool." cool. And I took it on an airplane, so I was like... I was completely out, and I was wondering if I would so you, chat up the person next to me. What if you did? What if you literally had... How crazy would this be? You wake up with your, your wrists ziplined together because you're arrested on the flight to Italy? No. Well, that, oh, well, that was your uh, trip over there to Pompeii, huh? Uh-huh. Episode Rome reference. <laughs> Quite an episode. Click down. I remember that. No, never oh. mind. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Find your own damn videos. Find the video yourself, you piece of garbage. Episode listing, www.unbanders.com. Um, I do have something because I want to come to dreams again, but I don't want to flesh it out entirely right now. Oh, no, I'm just, these are potpourri. Okay, potpourri. Mm-hmm. What I wanted to ask you, it's like a would-you-rather scenario. Scenario here. 
Hmm. Let's say you have the ability to do one of two things. You have to pick one. You can either um, influence and get men to extremely like you, but women will hate your guts, hmm. or vice versa. Which do you do? It, it lasts your whole life. First, the answer seems obvious. I would like to well, introduce a clarification here. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. In, yeah. in a previous episode, I think it was, I forget what I said. It's either men or women take over the majority of the globe. And I know I, you were wrong because I looked it up. I'm pretty sure I was right. I said women make up 51% of the population. This study could be five to eight years old. And in that five to eight year time frame, it's flipped. Really? So if I wanted an army of the majority of the world, I'd go for men. But I'm not going to do that. Do you know what the percentage is? Is it like 51% or like higher than that? Is that weird? It's It only swings like 51 to 49%. Hold up. As an aside, could it ever go to like 70 by chance or is that impossible? So I'm going to, yeah, as another it's, aside, it's I'm going to take your oh, side and go another I, uh, way. Oh, man, let's, let's, let's get in there. This, is a, get this is a good one. This is a good one. So I was listening to uh, the Joe, Joe Rogan experience. And he was talking mm. about... I know that podcast. Uh, Friend of the podcast. Yeah, Joe, Rogan. Joe Rogan. He had some, some good people on there. He was talking about how they took away wolves and then reintroduced them. And the wolves directly eat coyotes. So the coyotes... Are you talking about the, um, the habitat thing? You probably listened to the same one. No, no, no. I saw the special. Oh, really? Is it where they reintroduce wolves into Yellowstone? Yes, back? exactly. Yes, I did see this. All right, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. This is cool because so, we both saw this independently. Yeah. So the wolves really impacted the coyote population. And the coyote population is unique because they all howl to each other, so they know who's out there. Mm -hmm. The female coyote will listen to the howls, and if she doesn't hear enough howls, she will become more fertile and have more more offspring. Whoa. I didn't know that. You get deeper than I did, huh? Okay. Yeah. So the population of coyotes actually rebounded after they were decimated. Okay. And now there's even more coyotes than there were originally. So now they're less fertile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What, um, but what's interesting is, on top of what you were saying, I believe the coyote um, population affected a lot of the other animals, mm -hmm. the deer, uh, chicken, small mm -hmm. animals mm -hmm. that coyotes would attack. Now those animals ate fewer vegetation. That makes sense. It's an ecosystem that's fluctuating. Sure. Yep. So I think more vegetation made for more plants growing uh -huh. in certain spots and less in others. Probably more insects. But the ones too. were... Right. Now, where there were more insects and plants, it changed actually how much water flowed down the riverbeds. Huh. So literally, like, rivers formed where there hadn't been any, and some rivers diverted to other areas, and those rivers brought with them more animals to come down and drink from. And the wolves that originally started this had more food. Huh. So introducing wolves back into Yellowstone apparently not only changed the, the species landscape, it's it changed the physical landscape, which I thought was badass. Yeah. Like it changed just everything changed. Like uh, there's not a river over there. Oh yeah, we introduced wolves. <laughs> <don't> we? <laughs> the wolves did it. And then you're oh, like, right. and you're like <laughs> you're like, they made water pathways? <laughs> you're damn right they did. That's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's feeding back into do you think that like the the population of the world needs to be kind of equal to keep us going so if it gets too out of whack there's probably some process that brings us back to normal and we probably don't even think, know it right well, that balances counterbalances and all that and like uh mm -hmm. too much of one thing results in too little of something else yeah would you say too many humans making too much carbon dioxide would make too much global warming which could kill more humans which would lower carbon <laughs> dioxide levels Whoa. would you i mean would possibly. you possibly possibly i don't friggin' know i'm just saying that would make sense right yeah it would. one way to cool the earth is if everyone's dead <laughs> i mean i, I apologize but we're not <laughs> so, so, so well, bring it back cool. bring i'll it take back. a tangent back to our tangent back bring to the a tangent topic. back to you never answered my damn Asosceles. scenario. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I was just buying time. I was buying time. You almost got away with it. <laughs> so I'm going to use it. So I think if I could sway all women, it'd be mm -hmm. like swaying a woman is more difficult than swaying a man because a man can be logical. Sorry. Whew. 
<laughs> just got an awful warm on the on the unpanders. <laughs> Burning up over here, folks. Oh. I didn't say that, Dan. For the record, anyone I, just listening to audio only, Dan said that. Oh, never mind. We're clear. <laughs> He's winking. I would He's like to winking. use the. Uh, there's a quote from uh, Jack Nicholson in As Good as It Gets. He's uh he's an author author and he writes about uh I, I guess he's kind of what's what's the word? Not a psychopath, but he's like O C D about things. He's self centered eccentric. Yeah, eccentric. There we go. Yeah, eccentric. Thank you. Thank you for filling my words. So he's he's talking to Helen Hunt Helen Hunt and Helen Hunt says, How do you write women so well? And he goes, Well, I think of a man and I take away reason and accountability. <laughs> Not my that's words. Pretty, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Pretty awesome. That's a good burn. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I'd want to sway all the women because there's a there's obviously a sexual plus there, and uh, of course, and it's cool. Like women like you. Like yeah. What's up? Uh, like, even if you're not sleeping with them. Yeah. And you can use all the women to control the men. You could. That's pretty. That's pretty long term. Mm-hmm. Hey baby, I need you to make your husband. Who's the CEO of a company? Make me lots of money. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> and then she has to do it. What do you believe in her ability to change her husband, who's the CEO's opinion of you? I would believe if it's that good, the women of the world to change his. <laughs> you can give me all the money. Honey, honey, honey. I'm just telling you about this guy, Dan, I met today. Dan, who? <laughs> yeah. I'm a powerful CEO who's. Who's very uh, insecure? I will crush this bug. And plus, that was part of the thing. Men will hate you if the women love you. Uh, but they have to. Do they have to? They will they'll they'll respect hate you. Me. They're not going to shoot you on sight. If they never they can, met me, though, they won't know to hate me. They can accidentally favor me. Send you money? Yeah. <laughs> accidentally, <laughs> accidentally give you the job? I've never met him. I don't I, know who he is, but I'm going to give him the job. I trust you. Based on know. merit alone, sweetie. And my trust in you, a female. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm going to pick the women. I'm going with men because I'm a sexist pig of the podcast. And I just think more job opportunities and stuff like that. And women already yeah. probably hate me. That's hey, ladies, you like this? Uh, you like that? <laughs> hate me. Hate me, women. I don't know. I think that's, Cause I hate that's pretty unreasonable and unaccountable. <laughs> <laughs> You sexist pig. You sexist pig. <laughs> uh, ladies, we love you. Huh. So, let me see. I, which scenario? I have a scenario for you. So, say you were literally... I don't like it already. Half your size. So you're a really <laughs> tiny person. <laughs> okay. Small in I'm, stature. I'm three foot one? Yes. Oh my god. That's incredible. Yeah. But you are incredibly strong. You're the strongest man in the world. Oh, holy crap. Okay. <laughs> How do you use for that For my size or in general? No, for everything. No, YouTube videos. Um, I would go on. There's a, my favorite show, The Unpanders. I love those guys. They're uh-huh. funny as hell. Yeah. <laughs> I would just lift things behind them at all times. <laughs> <And> mini Nick. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be hanging out in the drums, playing the drums really small. <laughs> cool. Would you... Uh... Uh... You could get a job doing something, or you could just enter. Um, Olympic athletes get money, don't they? That's true. So you could be the, the strongest yeah. little man in the world. Oh yeah, dude! Low center of gravity. I'm friggin' tearing it up. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I want everyone to know I'm the smallest because I'm a little insecure because I'm three foot one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I want I want everyone to know how friggin' strong I am. Because if you're an Olympic bench presser or whatever, squatter, power lifter, who cares, dude? People can't mess with you. You, like, go Olympics. you gotta go public eye. You gotta go public eye at Olympics. I know it's a freak show a little bit, but it's like the power of being the strongest in the world over Trump's freak show. And if you're three foot one listening to the podcast, we actually like you, you're not a freak show. But if you're the strongest man in the world and three foot one, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I... it, it made me so mad he picks up a house. <laughs> yeah. uh. I would just love to use that to egg muscle men on. Like the guy that's like 6'5". Oh, and just like, that's the guy who's bigger than you? Yeah. He, he's like, hey. hey, little man. And then he tries to push you out of the way, and you're just like, hey. Hey, <laughs> hey big tree. You want to mess with me? 
be interesting. Yeah. Now, would I pick that if it was that life or my life? No, because I don't know that life. Like, I feel like that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work to be. <laughs> I know you're all an Olympic athlete. Cost, but, like, I don't know. If you knew yeah. you could win a gold medal and it was just like, you just have to do a lot of work to get there, like, you're going to win it. You just have to do a lot of work. You'd probably be like, yeah. that's uh... what you <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, what kind of medal? Like, how much does it pay? Did you make it easier. I don't know. What year is it? That was the year. I like Summer Olympics better. I'm not really. <laughs> yeah. Oh. My, my kid's sick. I might just not do it this year. <laughs> he's got a cold. And it might get me, and then I'm sick, and he's sick, and I'm, we're both I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm done. <laughs> hey, well, it's over. Come on. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. That's some good scenarios there. I think I enjoyed that thoroughly. Uh, I hope wait, the audience should too. Are you seriously ready for the best part of our show? Oh, I think I am. I hope you're going to skip right to <laughs> oh, so every challenge. challenge. Oh my goodness. Oh lordy. I can't believe. It comes so quickly. And it goes so fast. I come so quickly to this area of expertise. Yes. Ooh. Did you have one? I actually have one. It's a really good one. I have, well, I have like, I have the, the celebrities I, I think I, I'd want. No, no, that doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Uh, I actually have a whole celebrity challenge. Okay. You, you do the whole thing then. Christina okay. Hendricks. Ooh, Ooh, smoke show! Uh, which liquor did she? Uh, was that? I don't remember, but I'm into that liquor. Oh. Hold on. And Penelope Cruz. Oh, thank I you. I want them to go up against each other. You know what we like with them girls. You know what I'm saying? What kind of challenge can we get them to do? Hold up. Dizzy bat. Ooh, they gotta go around the bat, and then they're all dizzy. And maybe, uh, I haven't told you what they're wearing yet, Danny. Excited? Oh, you ready for I this? I can already picture it. Yeah. They're going to do it in bee catcher gear. Oh, like bee catcher gear? That's the least sexiest thing you could do <laughs> for black label whiskey. Uh, where's the blue label? Oh. Interesting. Keep looking, dude. You better get your attention back to the podcast. <sighs> Sorry, there's, a, there's <laughs> something on this screen over here that I just... It's thing. hard to resist. Anyway, Luckily, I know she loves me because anyway, all the women in the world anyway, love Ms. me. Ms. Hendrix. Uh, Ms. Hendrix. God, her face. Ms. Is... Cruz, comma Penelope, come on down and do Dizzy Bat with us. And you're going to wear those big old B, <laughs> B caretaker masks and those B outfits that make you look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And you're going to spin around on that bat. And you're going to swing at that wiffle ball like, damn, ladies, that's hot. Uh, yeah. I think it's sexy as hell. It's the sexiest thing I can think of with those two. I'm biting my finger now Honestly, right now because I can't. Oh, uh, you ladies would do this. We're going to donate so much to charity. 80 cents so, and per, per busy person. Event. Per, oh, yeah. <laughs> per person. I'm talking charity. 60 cents. <laughs> per at that. For both these. So what, what are the rules exactly? You have to spin around, what, three times? Six. Six times. <laughs> I want them dizzy. <laughs> they have to hit these a wiffle girls, ball. These voluptuous women going to be hiding in these bee masks. Oh, oh man. Jesus. There are no Jesus. bees involved, right? Just to make, just to clarify. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> we'll, do it, we'll do it with the bees. How about that? Just to make it fair. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> we're releasing... A stream of angry bees at these women. <laughs> so they have to uh, hit a wiffle ball mm -hmm. off of a, a stand. Mm -hmm. And then does it involve running around the, the bases? or It's got to travel at least 45 yards, so they got to do it again. <laughs> 45 yards. And then, they have to do, and then they have to do the bases. So it's just pretty easy. And if they, will, if they care about charity, yeah. they'll both do it. Yeah, let's see if they care. Pretty sexy, you know what I'm saying? Mm, those B outfits. I'm gonna have a weird fetish now. I just created a fetish. Post. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I love bees. Anyway, that's that's the celebrity <laughs> challenge. Wow. Hey, we call that one "Honey for You." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, nice. I really like that. So, that was enjoyable. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, where do you want to go next? I, I got something easy. Word of the day. It's pretty uh, quick. Well, you could. Or you could go to the Thursday throwback. I have that. Oh. You think I wasn't prepared uh -huh. for Thursday throwback? Making Let's sure see, you knew the first. agenda. 
Mine's a little dark. Oh, I love dark. My specialty. It's sad, I think. Hmm. I think. I don't know. This I was I was too young, but I'm looking back now and I'm thinking this is sad and dark. Okay. Ready? Oh, yeah. So I don't care, no one will go there. Max Myers used to be my camp that we went to. Okay. You've never That's what it. the place? Max Myers? What, who no. that's what it's called? I don't know. It was in Philadelphia. It was, a, it was a park. Not a lot of people went there. It was our um summer camp though. Is this the one that had spray painted penises everywhere? Yes, exactly. Oh. It was very um very urban explored. Mm-hmm. Well, um at the end of summer camp, at the end of every day, you would either get in your lines or walk home where your parents would pick you up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, there was like a 380 pound man who was like 40-ish and wore glasses and he would ride up to everyone with his big old duffel bag out of breath because he's fat and out of shape and everything. And all these kids coming at like 12, 11, 8, 9, 7, 5 and he would go to right where we would all exit and he would sell us gimp. You know gimp is? You know what GIMP is? There's a GIMP program, but that's not it. No, 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 no. The little plastic spools of colorful string. But it's it's like string, but it's plastic. And you would overlap the strings to make, like, designs. Like, you can make box design, zipper. Um, you crisscross it. You do, uh, there's, like, five strings. He's typing GIMP, folks. GIMP. Only because I, I don't know if he never had GIMP growing up. Oh, my sister had these. There you go. And you can make them yourself. Yeah. We called him the Gimp Man. Because he would sell Gimp for like, you know, 80 cents That's a dollar, whatever the hell. It was cheap. Man. Hold on. I didn't realize that. I just thought that was his job. Like, that was like his career. <laughs> like, you know how you'd be like, oh, he's an engineer. He's the Gimp Man. He um he plays professional basketball. And my parents were always weird. They were always like, did did he follow you guys home? And they'd be like, no, he stays at the, he stays at the camp, Mom. What's, what's wrong? And they, they wouldn't tell me. But, like, looking back, like, just recently, I'd be like, holy shit. That gimp man was probably trying to look for kids or something. I don't yeah. know. That's a little, that's a bit much, dude. Huh. And you could ask him how to make the different designs or whatever, and he would try and help you. He had all these spools of colors. Like, he was like, you want eight feet of green? I can be eight feet of green. <laughs> Measure it out with his little ruler and cut it and charge you, like, a dollar thirty or whatever the hell it was. Huh. I also thought maybe that is the only way he can make money. And then I was like, <sighs> yeah, nope, I can't justify this. Oh, man. <clears throat> How anyway, much do you only... would make per day? I don't know, like 18 bucks? I made that up, but oh my that sounds reasonable, really cool, right? That's kind of scary. That's pretty scary. That is scary. <clears throat> well, so hold on. So my mom was like, one time he was like talking to my sister or something. Like, and she was trying to buy green gim and purple gim. She was going to make a, whatever, a friendship bracelet or some crap. And I was like, what is he doing talking to your sister? And I'd be like, she's buying purple gimp and green gimp. <laughs> it's good, and, mom. Yo, she, yeah, and she was like, she was like, go tell him to leave your sister alone. I think because my mom's too embarrassed to go up and tell that guy you're a fat pervert, get away from all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And so she shouted so, it in the like, middle of the playground. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get away, you fat tell, tell that fat pervert to get away from my children, Nikki. <laughs> you know, and I'd be like, okay, mom. I had to go over and be like, Mom wants us to go. And she's like, I ain't buying again. But I was like, you have to go. Mm-hmm. I but I thought about him, and I thought about Gimp, and I was like, Gimp is pretty funny. Like, And Gimp Man was probably a molester, or wanted to be. I feel like he was too cowardly to go through with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He could, be a, he could be a brave, powerful, super strong child molester. God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is he was a coward. And he may have died alone. He just wanted to make the children's lives that much better. And then I thought that. Well, I was like, what if he was just a really good guy and he, like, was a firefighter during the day, just a fat one, and then in the afternoon breaks he was like, I'll sell colorful string to children. And And not talk to their parents at all because I'm afraid of them. Yeah. And he would ride that bike. I still remember him. It was weird. He didn't even have a car? He had a bike? No, he would ride his bike there. Uh... And it's in a duffel bag with all these GIMP products. So, like, this is before the day's internet. I mean, you couldn't order GIMP anywhere. Who the hell knows what store sold GIMP? Yeah, you'd be flipping through some catalog and trying to call right. some numbers. And- right, so, I mean, it was convenient, I guess. And the summer camp is where kids would use it. 
And I guess maybe the counselors were still outside. It's not like they would just leave him and be like, oh, get him in there. Let everybody go. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but, but anyway, I thought of him when I was thinking of old school stuff. Like I was like, oh, Gimp was funny. And I was like, oh, the Gimp man. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Huh. They used to have other things like the, uh, I know those like snap bracelets that were yeah. made of metal. Metal. Uh, and then eventually he... one of them like started to wear Broke. thin and then slit the person's wrist. I don't, that's the myth. That. Would that ever happen to you? I'm Would you be like, oh, it keeps getting thinner. It keeps getting thinner. Yeah. It keeps getting thinner. It keeps cutting oh, me. It, very, it very, wait, oh, wait a second. It hurt me. It hurt me. It keep doing it. It hurt me. Ow. It has a tiny cut. Oops, it's bigger. Oops, it's even bigger. Oops, I'm bleeding. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> Let me use this around my neck. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Let's see if snap bracelet works around my neck now. Oh. There's so many little things like that. There's just pure plastic <clears throat> bullshit. Oh, I guess that's going on now, too, probably. I guess so, but at least we're not experienced. I mean, maybe in 10 years when our children finally get involved in that crap, we'll be like, oh, stay away from the Gimp Man. No, actually, I'd probably be like, hey, Gimp Man, I have you on Instagram, I have you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you is. We're tracking you. Step outside, I'll step to you. Hmm. <sighs> well, what was your throwback? Because mine was pretty dark. I'm going to just say it was the bracelet things. I also have those oh, little... wait, was it bracelet things? Hmm. There were these little, like, peg things I, my mom and my sister liked that you put light them on, bright. like... Light bright. Not light bright. No, no. There were, like, these little right. plastic cylinders that you would arrange in this, like, heated tray, and you can make different patterns out of them, and then when you heat them up, they fuse together, and they form a pattern. Interesting. Sounds like Gint meets Light Bright. Thank you. Yeah, well, a little bit. A little bit. Interesting. People make like Super this. Mario and Yoshi out of them. That's the ones I've seen today. That maybe they still exist. The yeah. Gimp Man is horrible. They're still making like <laughs> the Gimp yeah. Man could be. That's a perfect name for like a a creepy villain. <laughs> the Gimp Man. <laughs> Gimp. The Gimper. The Gimp mm. Man's gonna get you. <laughs> Quick shout out. Um. To a big listener of the podcast, he's one of our faves, oh. Dildan Hune, Dildan69. Oh, no, you said his name. Uh, everyone can look for him, please. please do. <laughs> Good. He seriously, he loves this podcast. He, he he listens to us on an old ham radio. That's Hune with a W-H-O-O. Stop, 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 go, go. <laughs> I said Dildan69. Okay, good. That's what I said. Anyway. <laughs> Um. Anyway, he he told me the other day that he found his girlfriend's journal, like her diary. Uh, which page did he flip to? Oh, uh, so exactly. I was like, you didn't open it, did you? And he First goes, page. I did. No, he just opened to the middle. It was like one of those pages that's very creased. He opens it up. What do you think he found? Uh, probably Ryan Gosling. Pictures uh, like that's you would think in a normal girl. Well, <clears throat> his picture crossed out. Apparently. Pentagrams. She wrote this fiction. Where she's the main character. Oh boy. Hold on, and she finds this rare amulet. It's ancient, and she unearths it. Is she at the center gets... of the flat Earth? No, no, no. Hold on. She. It gives her the power to shrink huh. any man on Earth. <laughs> so what she does is she keeps. All, it's all the same paragraph, just with a different person. So she's like. She grabbed the power amulet and she turned to Hitler and she said, "Ye, I shrink," and she would shrink Hitler back in time and step on his balls. Oh, that was her thing. So then he found two stories where she shrunk him, turned to him and said, "Hey, Dildan, I shrink thee," and he shrunk and I stepped on his balls. She does this through like tons of people through history. There's a George Washington, I shrink thee, George Washington, and she steps on his balls. I shrink thee, Ben Franklin, and she steps on his balls. He does no clue. Anyway, he literally pretended he didn't read nothing, closed the book back up, put it back under a pillow. What do you do? At this point, I don't even know. You can't bring it up, can you? <laughs> how do you, how do you quietly bring it up? Hey, babe, um, I was wondering if you wanted to step on me tonight anywhere. I don't know. Can you even say that? Be a Halloween hey. costume would be a shrunken version of you. Hey, pretend, pretend you're a giant. Step on me anywhere you would. Step on the dot. Oh, oh, that's what you do. I want you to be you a bigger a, person. Yeah, hold on. Drop, drop a doll in front of her, dress like you, and see where she steps on it. With your, with your 
Nuts hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> like, Honey, uh, I dropped this doll. Could you pick it up? Yeah, I'll pick it up. And you would, you, she would step on its balls. Because <laughs> that's her thing, I guess. Oh, the visual from stepping on balls is just. Uh... Anyway, good luck, uh, Dildan. We really root for you here at the podcast. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Hopefully, she ain't listening. <laughs> She'll know that's that you read her journal. That's all that will be left, just a deal. And she will step on your balls. Yeah. <laughs> She'll get her wish, I guess. I don't know. Huh. It's really sad, actually. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. I hope he It'll correlated that to what argument he had with her. But he probably isn't that smart to look back. He's going to lose. No. <laughs> I can't read. Yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's like a picture. Picture graph. <laughs> we have arguments, and I draw pictures, and she gets even more mad. <laughs> diagram I don't even know what I'm drawing hmm. Hmm. so that moves us on to uh, to our I have word of the day oh you you do you didn't oh, I actually fuck. I have a good one actually do you alright I'll go first because mine's not that good <sighs> mine's literally a word that <clears throat> has been in my head since I was an English major in school indomitable oh yeah you know that word yeah well, William Faulkner wrote a book about some kind of bear, and I don't remember it. He's Snowman. Steamboat or something. There's a steamboat or a bear involved. Trust me. William Faulkner. Okay. American author. 1940s or some shit. I don't know. 20s? Uh, yeah, anyway, right. he uses the adjective indomitable like 400 times to the point where I ignored it all the time because I was an English major. I can just pretend I know what it means. And I was like, what does this word mean? Because that's what I would do with most words I didn't know. You Final exam. <laughs> right. And I looked it up, and uh, it's been in my head ever since because no one else uses that word except William Faulkner in that book. So There are certain words out. that just don't get used in almost Right, books. and he used it so much that it was like, wow, buddy, let it go. Do you think he but dropped he, it in normal speech all the time and people were like, God, that's Faulkner. He, he was trying it out in sentences. He was like, ah, the freight train cometh this way. I, I find it indomitable at most. And people were like, Bill, Bill, you got to cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> you called him Bill. It's awesome. I didn't even make that joke yet. That was nice. Yeah. He's in his yeah. diary writing indomitable. Uh, Bill's here. I want those indomitable French fries, please. <laughs> They're just regular. French They're gonna fries. sear my insides <laughs> and remain oh. French fries throughout the process. Ooh. Mm. Huh, my word is a little bit more um, awkward sexual? and sexual, mm. or it not sexual. Like Especially clismophilia. Fear of pleasure. Not philia Damn. is an Oh, philia enjoyment, enjoyment of pleasure? It, was I was it pleasure though? It's a certain type of pleasure. Sexual. It, it is definitely sexual. Clitoris? And this is from uh, Mindhunter, which I've been watching on Netflix and I'm almost done. Which is mm-hmm. yeah, pretty good. But clismophilia okay. is the enjoyment of enemas. Ooh, that's a bit much. That's, yeah. How can, can you want them? I, yeah, I think you. It's either way. You you give them or take them, which is yeah, I guess whatever. Um. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that one. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna drop it. But I don't I don't see how you perform a normal sexual act after enjoying an enema because that's gonna get messy. That's just not. I don't know how that's fun. I don't get it. Well, enjoying the enemas, uh, taking it and then pooping it out, right? I don't, That's what I, don't, I think. They didn't specify what happened first. It has to be. There's no way you enjoy the putting whatever into your butt, and then <laughs> when you have to poop like two minutes later, no, it's probably all part and parcel an enema. Uh, an enema is probably the beginning and the end. So you're saying this is completely logical then? It's understandable. Well, I, guess, I, don't, well, I don't. I don't. I don't know. But I'm. I'm saying there's no way they're like they enjoy the first half of it, and they're like this is great, and then afterwards they're like. This is terrible. I have to poop. <laughs> and they're like, you just did this to yourself. There's no... Uh, if there is, that's... A, maybe that's better. Maybe those people are... Yeah. That's an interesting individual. Clismophiliac. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Clismos. Click that like button and subscribe down below. We're the Panthers. Uh. <laughs> if you... <laughs> Dan, will for the podcast. Yeah. That was a blink. That was a blink. <laughs> one eye at a time blink or a double wink Thanks. however you want to take it <sighs> good well, words good words I do want to say something 
Huh. Oh. What do you got there? What do you got there? You gotta make sure <sighs> make sure you're in the light. You're not in the limelight. There's no limelight in that area. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. Oh, R. R. Martin. Now it's too close. George. George R. R. Martin, dude. Oh. Game of Thrones. Game oh, of, sorry. Game of your turn. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. That is perfect. Stop moving. Well, I don't. I want to talk. No, no. I don't want this book to take everything. Anyway, guys. Um, George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones. Oh, that sounds like the hit TV show everyone's talking about. Of course. Everyone knows the show. Does everyone know the book? I know everyone knows it is a book. I know everyone knows it's a good book. Actually try and read it. Everyone at home, I, I've been stem to stern. I think this is great. For $18 in the USA, if you're in Canada, it's $21. I don't want to get into the disparity. Yeah, dollar. Go They're both dollars, but damn it. Anyway, this is the paperback version. It works just as well as the hardback version. I can't put this book down right now. It's just glued to me. And the thing is, you think you've seen it all when you see the show? Well, check the book. Look at all these pages. You know what you're getting in here? More characters, more stuff, more drama, more nudity, everything. And it's just, what it is is simply incredible. It's it spawned the TV show. So if you like the TV show, chances are you're going to like the literature. Think, people. Anyway, I haven't read a single page of this friggin' book. Reading is for nerds. If I did, I'd be down with this book. I really think everyone should give it a shot. I will not. I don't even know what book of the series it is. It's like book three, book four, or book oh, one. You start in the middle. Who cares? Reading is for nerds. Anytime you see someone reading, dump coffee on their book. I'll teach them a lesson. Huh. You know what? You... Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You really need to get the audio book. And if you got the oh, audio book, I think you could use some Bluetooth headsets because these things are fantastic for pretending to do work while at work while listening to a podcast or audiobook. Where's the wire? Oh, these ones, oh, they do have a wire. I actually that no, no, meant the wire to the device. <clears throat> oh, the there's there's over? multiple wires. Who I mean, who who needs No. Those? <laughs> They're wireless. They're wireless. They're wi- well, actually, I'd like to bring that up because I have two of them. Oh. And this one I kind of don't enjoy because it falls out when I'm running. When mm. I run, I rarely run. When, when do you I do. run? Did you run once? I made sure I ran, so I was disgusted by it. Um, and the one time that I ran in the past month, it fell out, and I was like, I can't use this ever. So then I got this one, which uh, it has this weird earpiece thing, which I'll put that oh, up there. That it looks makes, like new Google headphones. Yeah, it like sticks in your ear and makes sure yeah, it doesn't fall out. It. But then you got this other one that's like flailing around, which is just like, uh, uh, I, I need to be like here. Tuck it in your shirt, dude. Look. Oh, uh, it just starts to dra- like no. drag down. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. That's what I do. Yeah, that's why I. Uh, that's that's exactly why I recommend uh-huh. this product. It's the the Two Run M twenty six. Holy shit! It's fantastic. I'm in love. It's I can't blue. believe this that actually exists. Expensive. And I, I might look like my grandmother from 10 years ago, but. <laughs> He's talking about the hair, the facial features, the wrinkles on the eyes, the, uh, the earpiece, the shirt. He's talking about the whole package. Coach. Yeah. Uh, but I actually used this today for two conference calls at the same time. Mm. It was amazing. I was doing twice the work of anybody <laughs> at where I work. It's just amazing. Wow. And um, listening to a podcast. It's strange how that I can do so many things. With just a simple oh. Bluetooth headset, the hmm. Two Run M26. Sounds expensive. How much was it? Oh, sixteen ninety nine. That's it. That's it. I can get one today. Uh, maybe in it tomorrow. Because <laughs> today's running short. But it's a little late. Yeah. It's a little late. Yeah, it's wow. pretty good. I prefer this one. It's good. Incredible. It doesn't even hurt my ear. My tiny little ears. Folks, what he's saying is so true that I have to relieve my bladder. I don't care if you leave the goddamn podcast running. I have to piss. You got to piss. Do you want to tell them about something? I don't care. I really just oh, have to piss. Oh, man. You can cut it. I don't care. Everyone leave this. Talk to them, Dan. But you talked about this. Oh, man. He talked about how good he was peeing the last episode where he was driving up to some cabin in the woods and peeing in a bottle. He obviously has cups nearby, so he could just pee right into the cups. He could do it on camera because it only shoots above his nipples. He has a thing with his nipples, so it has to stay right above his nipples. And he just, he could have just let it go. He could have just been peeing right now. You can almost hear, if you, I'm going to go silent for a moment. Let's hear, let's, let's listen in. 
Ooh, that's that's tough. He he's probably just faking it. He's probably going to his woman and saying, "Hey, I'm gonna be a minute, but you have to stay sexy, cause I'm gonna be back in about. I'm gonna make it 30 minutes, and I'm gonna make her wait. I'm gonna make her wait because that's the way I am. They have to really. Oh, <laughs> they have to really have a nice, nice long pause for for them to really enjoy it. So he's back. Wow. How was it? Was it really good? Did I miss anything really good in the episode? Oh, you probably did. But you're going to have to listen to the episode at unpanderers at youtube.com or www.unpanderers.com. I'm going to go there. You think I'm kidding? I'm gonna go to un- is it the unpanderers or just unpanderers? Oh, just unpanderers. It made a real That's simple. easier. That's yeah. easier. That's way easier. I'm going to go there, folks. I don't care what you friggin' say. Uh, Whatever he said is a lie. <clears throat> probably. It's really had to pay. I feel so great. <laughs> All right, what do I do after I get to the website? Oh, you click on everything. More clicks equals more unpanderers. That's the truth. Really? Well, I love this stuff, so I would keep doing it, I imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah. You certainly will. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. That brings us back to uh, dreams. If you want to touch on dreams. No, no, no. Right, uh, go ahead. Here's oh. I'll end with that. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Unless you, got, you seem like you're a little hesitant. No, no, no. Um, I have something we'll go out on. Okay. So dreams for me, um, I know I discussed my roommate Tom and how his are indistinguishable from everyday boring <laughs> yeah. workday life. That's the worst mine dream is, imaginable. Mine is the opposite. My dreams, I have trouble remembering because they change phases of matter. They change time. They change location so much. Mm-hmm. Seems like, like you're addressing the unpredictable and trying to learn from the unpredictable. I, I don't know if I'm trying to learn from it so much as just saying that's how my life is, maybe? I don't have to get too deep, but when funny. I dream, like, I'm in an old house that I used to live in, and I have a toy that isn't mine. It was, like, this girl I dated once named Tara in when I was five, and she had a oh, playhouse that we Tara. I didn't have. It's that was her name. name. Uh, we were, I was supposed to marry her when I was five, anyway. Did you give her a little um, game bracelet? No, uh, this is before Gimp Man tried to molest anyone. So. <laughs> you could have married her with Gimp Man. She had this, like, sink-cook uh, combo, and it's in my dream, somehow in my house, which it was never there. And it's opening and closing like a mouth. And it's, like, weird, because some people are treating it like it's not doing that, but I am. And then, like, all of a sudden, I'm also thinking of another part of the house, the upstairs and what part of the upstairs might be weird hmm. and then i'm also thinking how that house is weird because the driveway is from my house where i moved to in the suburbs and i'm like whoa but then i think how there's like a superhero movie i saw recently and like it's wednesday and i have to do this wednesday thing it's and all over like, the place man oh dude it doesn't even make sense i can't even follow it and then like sometimes i'm two people at once sometimes i'm everyone in the room Sometimes I'm seeing through everyone and I have to get past them all to become my true self. And then I have to find out what time it is, but time has changed already. And then I'm like back at this, like, I'm at my desk in sociology. The only, for some reason, I remember a desk in sociology class that had the word like sex carved into it or something. Anyway, my dreams are so weird that they don't. They don't usually leave impressions on me because they're just this fluid, weird, liquid, odd, I don't get it thing that has, like, there's almost no, you know, someone's like, yeah, I dream my mom had sex with my boyfriend. Like, a girl will say that, and it's like, hmm, that's interesting. Expand on that. And they're like, yeah, it was my mom, and she was sleeping with my boyfriend of eight years. And they're like, hmm, go on, in my father's room. And, like, that's, like, weird. Like, I can never have a dream where people I know do something like that. Involve because my dreams are people too... with possible actions. Feasible. Right. Mine are, mine are so weird that I can never do that. Mine's always, like... You're just, like, a, a movie that is mixed with another movie. That's mixed with real life. That's mixed with different perspectives. Like, sometimes I'm seeing stuff, like, happy stuff, but I'm seeing it through a sad lens. And I'm, like... Everything that I see is happy, and I'm like, imagine if it was sad. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you're going to die in eight years. You're going to live forever. You're a vampire. Vampire movies are bad. And it's like my brain just keeps moving. <laughs> like, it doesn't slow down. And I'm like, 
I'm like, I'm just along for the ride. I'm it's like, like one of those, uh, you just start scrolling words. I've seen your pages right. where you just had yeah, random yeah, yeah. words. Yes. That's my dream. everywhere, all at the same time, and just never gets anywhere. It spreads right. continuously. Yeah. Right, because it won't stop, because you can just build on the previous word with something weird or something. Hmm. I will sidebar. How old do you think Tara Reid yeah. is? Which one's Tara Reid? She was in American Pie. Thirty-eight. Uh, you would be off by about five years. But I was just seeing she's that much older. Um, she's ten years older than us, I think. Really? Yeah. I, I figured four to six years older, and that's what I was kind of going. She's up, pretty good looking. And I, yeah. when you said Tara, that's the immediate Tara I thought of. So I pulled up her no, picture. No, no, this is a white trash and... Tara. If she ever finds the podcast, she might beat me up, but oh. I don't care. Mom's, her mom's a smoker. She'll be good for the podcast. Just film it and. Uh... <laughs> 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 that's where you're gonna want to be three foot listen, one and the strongest man in the world <laughs> you're gonna shrink down and then be like oh <laughs> uh, listen before you beat me up just come into my drum room why should i do that <laughs> just do it i gotta turn on my skype i gotta adjust the sound levels hold a second <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> testing penis testing pop sizzle penis <laughs> that is how we test our mics folks. <laughs> yeah Believe it or not, we're as real as you and everyone else at home. Yeah. And my uh, my dreams are always kind of like a movie set, and I think of situations that could happen, and then right at the end, they either end, like they, they stop, and I'm like, what the, like, why did that stop? Do your dreams have hard endings? Like, um, end scene, or like, they just kind of stop? Like, you wake up? I usually wake up. Like, I feel like my brain right, is just right, like, right. we're getting close to waking up, so I'm just going to slow this down until, oh, you're awake. And it's like, I wanted to <laughs> finish, finish making it, out right. with Camilla Cabello because I'll never get to do that in real life. Is that a threesome scenario? I mean, um, there were other people watching. Her, just, were, this is the back of the old 1950s car. Uh, uh, interesting. And she's like Cuban or Puerto Rican. She, they all, all those, all those females look the same. <laughs> Pop stars, early pop stars. Anyway, um, <laughs> moving on. Yes, yes. Oh. So, yours are movie scenarios that you insert yourself, and then either a celebrity or someone else you know. Yeah, from? like the time I I watched that Jurassic sense. World number two or three, and it was the entire movie. And Chris I just, Pratt, huh? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah, I, he was actually one of the. I think there were a dozen cast and. It was pretty good. It was involved, so I, I, if they follow my dreams playbook, you should watch Jurassic World number two. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. So, what do you think dreams are, physically, actually, scientifically? It's either like you have unexpressed fears, which are probably floating around in your brain. Okay. Maybe it's why is it unexpressed? Them? Why do you need to express a fear? This is really, I'm just asking. I think you're learning from it. I think you're understanding. Because your, so your fear you really don't... has basis in reality, right? So you're trying to understand yeah. why you fear reality. Right. Okay, I don't disagree with that. So what you're doing is you're confronting these fears, but in a safe environment, your brain. Yeah. While it's off. In a simulated environment, I would say. So that's, so that's what a dream is, a simulated environment that you yeah. can do whatever in. Yeah, some people say it's training for bizarre scenarios. Like, if you were in a burning building, you could do any number of things. And maybe you don't even remember the dreams where you're, like, going out the window. You're going down the but steps. you trained for it. You thought of it before. Grabbing the parachute. Yeah. Maybe you maybe you have thought about it before, and it's just stored somewhere in your brain. So when that scenario happens, you're like, wait. I well, I mean, as, do. as simple as something stupid as um, swinging a baseball bat. If you've never done it in your entire life, but you at least did it twice before and even dream. if it was like jokey like ah i'm gonna pick up this wooden stick i'm a caveman Woo! Astros like, World Series Homer. Uh-huh. yep see if they get there <laughs> <sighs> but anyway it gives you a, a leg up on circumstances you've never encountered before i guess yeah yeah i think so it could be also like a recounting of the day, which is what I think some of the, because I, I, I was influenced by certain things prior to falling asleep that probably stuck with Showed me. up in a dream. Yeah. Now, what about things that show from like 12 years ago or like 18 years ago or a weird desk you sat at, like I said, in fourth grade, and you somehow remember that desk? 
that you've never thought of since you probably it's left weird Warcraft. because when you say that desk, I remember playing Pokemon inside that desk with the little etch marks and then the micro yeah. machines next to me. Yeah. It's like I remember playing uh, my own my own world inside of that little tiny fourth grade desk. Right, but like you didn't think of that for 10, 15 years. What made it come up now? See, I have a theory that dreams are a little bit like defrag on a computer. You're throwing out old memories? No, no, not throwing them out. Just you're moving things around. You could be refreshing them. Yeah, that's true. Right. You could be moving it. You could be storing it somewhere else. Maybe you pick it up here and move it to here. Maybe you move this to here. Maybe this is the forefront. Maybe this is here. Maybe you can stack these three drinks together because they're all related. Maybe you can, uh, you know what I mean? Because, like, we've discussed this many times and we've never come up with a solid answer. We don't know how the brain works, works on the minutest level. Like, when I think of chocolate and I have a picture of chocolate and I have a taste idea of chocolate and I have a generic idea of chocolate and I have my favorite chocolate and I have the spelling of the word chocolate and how the word chocolate looks and how chocolate looks and the best chocolate I've ever seen. <laughs> like, There's too they're much. all related, right? Yeah. There's the, the, They're all related, right? Yeah, they are. So when I say chocolate and my brain has to pull up chocolate, does it go to like this chocolate neuron and then all these synapses are connected to it <laughs> yeah. that I just mentioned and then more? Like the first time I kissed a girl after chocolate, it's the first time I had chocolate syrup poured on boobies and I ate it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, is everything related to chocolate is connected to that synapse? Chocolate syrup is not good on boobies for some. Well, I guess depending on who okay. you are. Depending on the boobies, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But. Shout out X's. That's like a whipped cream. It's not good either. It right, is, right. It's more the. It's the it's act. The Jesus thought. Christ. It's the dreaming right. of it right, right. that really matters. Ooh, dream. Bring it back. Because everything in the, actually most most dreams are kind of idealistic and like perfect. You don't have sure. you don't have the messiness. You can't get down to the detail. You never, you know, you're never reading a book in a dream. You're never. Just Tom does. <laughs> studying <laughs> Tom's for a class, a book passing for an, an exam. <laughs> Tom's, Tom's reading for forty minutes studying. He wakes up and goes, "What is that, Tom? You got to study." I didn't already. No. Oh. <laughs> what is he studying? <laughs> just disappointed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, just oh, wasting time. That would be boy. terrible. Love you, Tom. Yeah, most of the details in the dream are not, for me anyway, they're not Right, you can't, zoom in. you can't zoom in on them. Yeah. So you you have all these dreams so that have Again, I think that's almost like a, a brain um, defrag. I think your brain's moving different parts of ideas, feelings, but I think it's mixing places with people, with images, with smells, with place, times in your life, with feelings, with um, other people's feelings, and it's mixing them all together, at least in my dreams. Yeah. And that's why I get these weird jumbles that are like, I'm having someone else's perspective on something I saw once when I was eight in a place that I've been when I was 12 on a scenario where I've never been, but I thought I could be when I was 18. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just mixing so many things that it doesn't make sense to me. You could and be living then, on all the possibilities that you never lived just to feel fulfilled in some way. I think you're describing Tom, Tom's dreams. Fulfilling the <laughs> study. Well, here. So I think you brought this up. Um, what, what's it called vivid dreaming? The one lucid dreaming. dreaming. Thank you. Yeah. Did you do any research on that? Is that real? A little bit. Yeah. I. I, I can't at all. I have no control over anything. Hmm. That's where you can control your your dreams mm-hmm. and spread them out and decide what you're going to do in them. Right. Why wouldn't more people just want to make love with insert hot model at the time? That actually. If you could get to the point where you could pretend yeah. to do anything you wanted. Sure. Yeah. With a model. Whatever model you want. We're not going to mention names, Dan. <laughs> I know your brain is going overdrive. No, no. It'd be like, this, this man is clinically brain dead. He's in a coma, but he's the happiest person we've ever seen. Wait, so anyone we see in a nursing home that, that's just smiling and looking up has achieved, has achieved this goal, and that's what he's doing his yeah. whole life? Uh, that's the same thing with uh, Will Ferrell when he finally uh, finds a way to suck his own dick. <laughs> no, wait, in what? In what? Is it Saturday Night Live? Yeah, Saturday Night Live. No, I, I didn't see this. But it's like he, like he he comes up and he's got like a long beard and he goes, oh. <laughs> he's like, finally. And then he just goes back down. <laughs> Classic Willie. Classic Willie. Oh. Yeah. I would love so this, lucid dreaming, though. That sounds fantastic. 
it sounds awesome, but I guess doesn't your brain run out of limitations? Like, you can only experience so many things you want in a row before you don't want that anymore. Yeah, that's like relationships. When sure, if the perfect woman is the woman that actually kind of rebukes you and fights back, you can't. Yeah, I know some perfect women. Yeah, <laughs> feisty Italians. Feisty. Mm. <laughs> but they, uh, ooh, they're feisty. But um. I can't remember where I was going with that, but yeah. So you can't fit in the parts that don't, right. that don't, that are not compatible. Well, hold on. Oh, holy shit, dude! The Matrix. So basis, right? Remember, they have the uprising. Uh huh. And they're supposed to wake up. They're supposed to realize they hate the Matrix and fight it. Because they're within another Matrix. Yes. I hope I didn't ruin a movie from, movie from 1999. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Disclaimer. A Seven, movie from 1999. 17, when, 18 years uh, old. Hit rewind. <laughs> we really apologize here at the Unpanders. We don't like to ruin movies yeah. for all those people where they're just waiting to see those <laughs> sexy, sexy twins. We're sorry that the idea the of white podcast twins? didn't exist in 1999. <laughs> you know the uh, uh, the the podcast. Paragons of Truth, I believe. Oh, uh, I've mentioned this one before. I, I might did. have to listen in. Okay, anyway, listen in. They're friends of the podcast. They love us. Franson and all the guys. And It's called, like, first episode of everything, and they do a first episode. Uh-huh. They managed to fit in the twins from The Matrix 2, uh-huh. the albino twins, in every episode. And I always <laughs> laugh. They're like, they're like, yeah, we're rich people. Uh, what would you describe your perfect person? I don't know, like those those albino twins from the ma- the second Matrix. They're like the perfect human. I think it was like think... Apex or Apex twins. Yeah, Apex. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> either way, uh, shout out you guys. That's really funny. Uh, it's a funny bit. Hmm. And those guys are pretty sexy. <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> literally the worst bad guy in anything something just like teleport around and like pasty white them. guy you know, like, yeah, and they're like dreadlock yeah they're dreadlocks yeah they are and they have like they I would say like leather trench coats ghosts. but they're pure white <laughs> yeah. yeah they're awful they're literally the worst I'm a bad, bad guy, guy. <laughs> that's, what that's what they're saying with their look <laughs> I am a bad guy get ready to get your butt uh, hmm. the one thing for Matrix anyway those, okay. uh, I call it a cum cake. You remember that scene, right? Oh, where she eats the cake. She eats the cake and has an orgasm because of the cake is like a digital oh. manipulation oh, of her mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to save that for a scenario later on. You think about it. I'll think about it. The Gimp Man's going to give me orgasm cake? Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he has to feed it to me with his fingers, though. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> I could just imagine those fingers tasting really salty and dirty and just, like, having uh, all the soil from the previous corpse he had buried. He might be doing that, but he's probably... I mean, shout out, he's probably dead. Do you think he's, like, what, he's got 80s, 70s, 90s? Yeah, late 70s, but he was, like, 300-some pounds, so... Yeah, that's heart attack waiting for you. We're hoping here at the uh, Unpatters. Yeah, and shoveling dirt is a very physical activity, so... (laughs) Hiding evidence is a very physically demanding activity. Um, real quick, to wrap things up a little bit, we really touched on dreams. We don't know what the hell they are, but um, I did notice a comment in our last video that struck me as interesting. Oh, really? Comments from the ethers. I don't know if you saw. you got to check it out. It's pretty new. It's a picture of a table, like a dinner table or a lunch table, I guess. You can eat whatever meal you want on it. It's got four legs. It's wooden. It's very generic. Picnic table. Yeah, picnic table. Sure. All right. It's it's more square shaped than a picnic table. Not picnic rectangular. Table. Okay. A, a, a square one. picnic table then. Mm-hmm. A square one. All the comment says is, how did I end up here? I am a table. And the name of the account is A Table. thought that was pretty funny. Shout out A Table. So I clicked on their website their YouTube user account. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's just a picture of that table and it says, Hi, I am a table. Respect me and always place a coaster on me. <laughs> and they have, they have thousands of viewers and uh, subscribers. And, <laughs> and just, I think that's awesome. I don't know how you found us. I, I don't know what it means. But thank you. From the bottom of our 
dirty, rotten hearts. Here we oh, go, Panda. <laughs> we think that's awesome. Oh, I have we, to... All people, all furniture. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care if you serve breakfast, lunch, or dinner on you. Just cl- click that like button, folks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that. You know, I was looking at our, our website the other day, and it's hosted by Blogger, which I mean, it's acceptable. I'm accepting it. It has a, a button up top that says "Next Blog," and uh, mm-hmm. you can click to any blog, pretty much randomly. So. Mm-hmm. I was clicking on that rapidly to seeing like what kind of blogs were out there. Now there's old blogs that haven't been touched since 2009. Oh, that's got to be weird. It's like a ghost blog. Yeah. We should go through some ghost blogs. Oh, dude. That's a good idea. There are also some really crazy ones. What kind of themes do you think the blogs uh, showed after maybe like 10 or 20 clicks? Because there were some common ones that showed up. Uh, the really? top two. Are they related to us? In a, in a way. Oh, I wish. One from 2009 relating to the unpanderers. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what happens <laughs> when you click. Like, does it go um, something in your vein or just something more popular or how's it work? It's completely on? random. It's, uh, there are a oh, lot well, of religious ones that are know. exalting God, the God. It's kind of like the unpanderers a little bit. Yeah, because we, yep, yeah, sure. We exalt. We exalt like hell yeah. So I go in the bathroom sometimes when my girlfriend's not around. I exalt. It takes me minutes. <laughs> Extra exalting all the time. So, <laughs> oh, there's no, I can't do it. I can't do the side. There's there's actually a, a tangent there. Save it, save it. I'm going to save it. it for the very end so I can Listen, cut it if I really need we've to. We've given them so much content tonight. These people are going to, if this is a sandwich, it's a triple decker. Oh, and everyone yeah. at home's looking at the unpanders and they just want to go, wow. Squish it down. Hold on. Yeah, squish it down with your hands a little bit. They're like, thinking, i got to cut this into quarters or eighths because I'm going to mm-hmm. share it with everybody. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can just watch the whole thing and share it again. Yeah. But I'm talking, you squish a sandwich, like just mash it till it's almost unrecognizable, and you just bite, dude. Mm-hmm. You're eating this meaty, uh, just tasty, this thing that's going to – it's good for your soul, people. Just do it. And then like, and then subscribe, and then – Do everything we want. We're not going to pander, but you better do everything we want. Just pander to us. Mm-hmm. We won't pander. You pander-ish. That's the way this works. Thank you for listening. Hey, folks. It's been a great night. I feel like I learned a little bit about Dan. A little bit about Nick. Yep. And even a little bit about Yourself. you at home. Yeah. Thanks for listening, folks. We like you. We like you a lot. Or the Unpanders. Check them, so do it.